Andrew's got a YouTube channel, Equitable Equations. I've got a YouTube channel, R Programming 101. We both teach R. I love his channel. I think he puts up with mine, but we have a great time doing these collaborations <laughs> in which we teach each other. I love other. your channel too, Greg. <laughs> Come on now. Everybody okay. gets subscribed well, to that one. Andrew, what are you going to teach me today in R? Uh, today, I want to talk about a couple ways to that we can keep our scripts just a little bit more tidy. Yeah, How I about you, that. Greg? What are you going to talk I, about? Whatever you're going to teach me about tidy scripts, I, I need that desperately. So I'm already thanking you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to teach you about a little trick that I learned that if you want to, in your pipe, using pipe operators, so piping your dart objects one to the next in the tidyverse, you can actually pipe your dart object into the t-test or some of these other base R functions that or, that ordinarily it's a little bit tricky. Uh, you'll see what I mean when I do it. I used to always create a new data object and then use that to do a t-test or to do whatever statistical function you needed to do. You can actually pipe these things straight in. There's a little trick though, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. Fabulous. Amazing. Should we jump right in and why don't you show us how to keep our data neat and tidy? Sounds good. I'm just going to share my screen here. All right. So uh, at the top here, you can see I've loaded up Tidyverse, of course, my standard first line. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna mine too, mine too. <laughs> I'm gonna be using the Penguins data set from the Palmer Penguins package. Um, I love this set, Greg. I discovered it about a year ago, and uh, it's a good sort of alternative to the classic Anderson Iris data set. You've got a, a good mix of categorical and quantitative variables here. And I've, and, never, uh, I've never seen this data set before, so I'm excited about it because I'm always looking for free data sets that I can practice my data wrangling on. So this looks really nice. I'm, I'm excited. This is one I recommend. I think uh, I think Allison Horst put this together. She's uh, um, She was an artist in residence at our studio for a while. I recommend checking out her art generally. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to get a ggplot with this, and uh, I'm going to plot bill length versus bill depth colored mm -hmm. by species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll see when I try and execute this line of code, there's going to be an error. I've intentionally put in the wrong name for the data set. It's penguins, not pen. So I'll fix that and go ahead and get my plot. There we go. Here it is, a thing of beauty. Just what, just what we would hope for. You can see the different uh, species of penguins have slightly different sorts of uh, bills. Uh -huh. But um, the downside of fixing that error is that now my code is not aligned uh, properly. I would like to have the X on top of the Y on top of the color. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, it annoys me. I am a little OCD about that. And um, if you're making a, if you have a larger data project and you don't fix stuff like this, pretty soon your code is just um, unreadable. Yeah. Yeah. I, this happens to me all the time. So whatever mm -hmm. you fix this, I'm excited to learn about yeah, it. Yeah. And so for the longest time, I was just going in here and tabbing through by hand and putting in spaces. But you can also use this magic wand here and go to reindent lines. And you'll see there's also a keyboard shortcut, flower I, uh, mm -hmm. on my Mac or um, control I if you're on a PC. And that'll just take care of that for you Lovely. automatically. Absolutely um, beautiful. Very nice time saver. I am going to use that all the time. Very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy I learned that recently. Um, similarly, sometimes you'll have long comments. And um, I find myself hitting enter and then another um, hash in the middle of the comment just to keep things aligned. And it breaks up my thoughts in ways I'm not thrilled with. But you can do a similar thing here. I'll just highlight my very long comment and then go to reflow comment. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that as well. Nice. And that will break it up um, into different uh, lines according excellent. to the, the maximum line width you have. Now, because I'm so zoomed in here for the purposes of this I'm video, it, it, yeah. it yeah. doesn't look quite as nice as it would if you were just on a, on a regular screen. But this is something I've also found to be a, a huge time saver. Absolutely beautiful. Well, very excited about those two tips. And uh, Andrew, I am going to use them all the time. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm excited about this one. So this is a little trick. I didn't know you could do this. Well, I kind of I thought you might be able to, but I, I did. I didn't. I didn't actually figure out how to do it until quite recently. Um, again, little trick. You can use require instead of library to call your 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 package. And the difference between library and require, by the way, is if you're sharing code with other people and you're not sure if they've installed the same packages as you, instead of saying library, if you say require. And th that this package is not installed on their computer, it'll install it and then call it. 
So, and, and if it all, if the package already exists on the computer that you're, that the code is running, uh, then require works exactly like library. Uh, so that's a little, little, little trick. We're looking at the Star Wars data set and most people have used it. Uh, just a, it's a great data set to practice with. And one I'm of gonna, my favorites. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's lovely. And I love the Star Wars movies. So it's, this is a fun thing. I'm going to, I'm going to do a quick T tests. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm going to compare the height of uh, the height of males and females and, and ask the question, you know, is there a statistically significant difference between the height? And we've all done this a million times. We start off by creating a new, a new data frame or a new data object. We've got Star Wars. We're selecting just name, height, and uh, name, sex, and height, filtering for just males and females, and then dropping the, the, the NAs out of height. And of course, if we run that code and then call that data frame, here's the new data frame that we've got. And it's pretty easy to run a t-test comparing the height of the males and females. To do that, here's our t-test. The function is t-test. The first argument is saying, take our numeric variable height and disaggregate it by sex and do the t-test, compare the heights. And we say then data frame equals df. Now, what's important about all of this, the point that I'm getting to, is that for the t-test, the t-test function wants to see the data argument here at the end, right? And if we run that, let's just run that, you know, and here it is, females are shorter than males, but that is not statistically significant, p, p hmm. value of 0 0.1. So, you know, surprise, surprise. But the point here is your t you can't pipe straight from, from drop NA heights, pipe that straight into t-test, because when you pipe data, yeah. pipe data, it expects the data object to be the first argument first in object. the next function. And the t-test wants to see the data object or the data right yeah. at the end is the last argument. So how do we fix that? Here we go. And voila, we've got the exact same code, select filter drop, pipe it into the t-test, height, height disaggregated by sex, dot equals boom, dot. The dot tells R or tells the tidyverse packages, especially when you're doing the piping, that it wants to see the data over here. Um, and it solves the whole problem. And you can use it for any function that you want to put into your pipes where uh, the data isn't expected to be the first argument. And now that I've discovered how to do this, I, I do it for all sorts of things. So it's quite a lot of fun. That's really great, Craig. I was um, sort of vaguely aware that this could be done, but would not have been able to tell you how to do it off the top of my head. And this is really great to know. Thanks for that. Yeah, no, no, no. It's exciting stuff. And thank you, Andrew. As always, it has been lovely seeing you. Just a quick note, uh, people who are watching our programming 101, the, the channel is sponsored and gets support from Nested Knowledge. Beautiful platform to support doing literature review. So if you're doing a literature review, check it out. Click on the link below. Otherwise, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Don't ever change. Speak to you guys soon. Cheers, Andrew. <laughs> Cheers, Greg. Good seeing you. Bye-bye.